In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a bar chart and a pie chart using Microsoft Excel. So to do that, let's jump on over to our main page here. And first thing you're going to want to do is just open up the data file uh, provided. So in this case, our displaying data file. Opening this up, we'll notice that uh, I need to adjust my margins a little bit. Let's do that here. There we go. Let's bring this all the way up as well. There we go. Okay, so opening up our margins, we see our Excel sheet that we have. We're dealing with Smarty Color, and we have a listing of Smarty Colors from red, red, right? There's randomly linked in this case here. To start off, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a frequency table of the different colors and the frequency at which rate each one occurs. We could also as well take a look at the relative frequency and we'll do that as well. So our frequency table, color, frequency, and relative frequency. One of the first things that we'll want to do as we get going here is we will select this entire column and we're going to go over to sort and filter. This here is just going to make it a lot easier to figure out what's happening here. And we'll go sort A to Z. Nope, sorry, that's the wrong one. We're going to go filter. There we go. Once we have filter, you'll notice there's a little drop down box here, smarty color. And we'll now click A to Z. And we'll have them in alphabetical order. This will just allow it to be a lot quicker for us to identify how many unique categories we have and create our corresponding classes. So blue, green, purple, red, yellow. And was that all of them? Yep, there we go. That's all of them. We're now going to work through the frequencies of each. So for blue, we have one, two, three, and four. For green, we have one, two, three, and four. Purple, we had three purple Smarties. Red, one, two, three, four, and five. And yellow, one, two, three, and four. Okay, again, our good rule as to what we want to do is we want to actually sum these. So, sum, and that is going to be, we can do this two ways. We can just use this sum function and select the numbers that we want to add up and get our result. We could do it manually. We could go for uh, equals 4 plus 4 plus 3 plus 5 plus 4. Final way we could do it is we could use up here in this top corner this auto sum button and it picks the bit above it and again we get 20. So I know in building this table, I know in getting all of our classes, there are actually formulas built into Excel to make this a lot quicker and easier. Not really part of our course. We're just going to go and do it manually. Again, if you know how to use these formulas, if you want to look those up yourself, feel free. It can make your life a bit easier, but not required for this course here. Our relative frequencies, keep in mind, it's the relative rate at which blue occurs with relation to our entire sample. So in this case here, it would be four divided by 20. Now, if we wanna just drag rather than writing this down each time, we can say, hey, I wanna keep 20 as a constant. We can go up here and we can just put a dollar sign after the D and after the A. Uh, sorry, before the D and before the 8. Uh, the other way that you can do this, if I'm not sure what it is on Mac, it's probably very similar, but on PC, if you hit F4, you cycle through your different locking um, symbols in this case here. So in our case, we have locked D8 to not change. If we now click on this one here and we drag it down, we notice that if we click on any one of these cells, this value has updated as we've dragged down, but the D8 where our sum is has remained constant. So that's what we've done there. 
Very similarly, we can get to this point here, make sure we've done it all right, and this should sum to one. Great. From here, we wanna create a bar chart. So let's take a look at how we're gonna create a bar chart. Let's do a bar chart of our actual frequencies. So we'll select these two, and we'll go up to the top here to insert, and we're gonna to go to insert column or bar chart. Select this guy, and we have it, and you see it just literally pops up just as how we've done it. Now, as we talked about in our video, typically, although there's no ordering necessarily to our qualitative nominal data set here, visually we'd like it typically to be highest to lowest frequency or vice versa. So let's update this and do it that way there. We'll select all of this. We'll go back up to this sort and filter and to the filter. Uh, one select was to get rid of the smarty color and here, there we go. We want to sort by frequency and we'll go from smallest to largest. So now we're organized three, four, 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 and five. Now, if we go back to these same steps, select color, select frequency, go back up to insert, insert a column or bar, bar chart, 2D column. We'll notice that now we are in an increasing frequency and we have our bar chart. Not quite done yet. We do want to add to this, right? Important aspects are titles for our axes and a title overall for our chart. The way we can do that is we can go to this little plus sign here and we can say, let's put in some axes titles. With these axes titles in, we can go in and this would be our smarty color. This axes, this is our frequency. And up at the top, we can put the frequency of smarty colors. And we're done. We have our bar chart. If we wanted to, we could do the same kind of idea to create a pie chart. So to do a pie chart, we're going to select our colors. Holding down control, we'll then go to relative frequency and then select down that one and insert. This time we'll take a look at a pie chart and just a 2D pie. You don't really want to get into these fancy ones. Just a standard 2D pie chart. And very similarly, we have all of our different colors being displayed. This is, as I was warning, where things get a little bit confusing sometimes using these softwares is that it just assigns a color. So we have something like blue for purple, orange for blue, gray for green. It gets rather confusing. Better just to keep it all one plain color in the bar chart case, or in this case here, let's just update this. Uh, relative frequency of smarty colors. Let's then take a look at how we can change these. Again, I don't want to spend a ton of time on pie charts because I'm not going to be having us do a lot of them, but change these to be actually what we want. So if I click on this, we can go to our fill and we can change the color to be, well, purple. Let's go change that color to purple. Uh, blue is our orange. Let's go change that guy to an actual blue. Uh, what do we have here? This was, oh, look at this. See, I've already messed up with this. If you hover over it, it'll tell you what it was. In this case, this was supposed to be red. So let's fix that red. This guy was supposed to be purple. Hovering over this guy, do I have this one right? That one's blue. The gray one, this guy's supposed to be green. Let's update that. And final one, what's the yellow guy supposed to be? Hopefully yellow is supposed to be yellow. Yep, yellow was supposed to be yellow. So it's now much easier to read. Our colors and our actual colors we're using line up. So we've created a bar chart, we've created a pie chart using Excel. 
If you have any questions about how to do this, feel free to drop me a line and we can go from there. Now, if we wanted to create a histogram, in this case here, we've just moved over from our qualitative tab. Now we can jump back to our quantitative tab. And here we're looking at the height in centimeters. And we see we have a whole bunch of different heights for 20 different individuals. So sample size of 20. If we want to create a histogram from this, quite a bit simpler than our steps for a qualitative data. And we just need to select this all. From here, we can go insert, jump on over to, uh, where is it here? Now let's just open it up. We can go all charts and go down to histogram. From histogram, we can select this and hit OK. And we see, OK, here we have our initial chart being input and three bins being selected with our bin width of, what is that bin width of, of 40. So here's the potential issue, is that Excel just picks this on its own. It's not necessarily gonna be what we visually want it to be. It's not necessarily gonna be based off of the rules that we've talked about, or rather the guidelines that we've talked about as to how this should be. So let's check, do we actually want three bins? Well, we said that we have a sample size of 20, right? Again, we start at two, we're going to 21. So the first guy there is being lost. So we have 20 observations. If we use our rule of two to the K, we want a number of bins such that two to the power of K is just bigger than 20. So let's give this a try. Let's try a value of K of three. So E, I'm um, sorry, E equals two to the power of three. Well, that gives us eight. Okay, two to the power of four. Yeah, not quite big enough yet. Two to the power of five. There we go. That there gives us a value that's bigger than our sample size. So that is we would want to use five bins. So we're gonna use a value of k equal to 5. From here, we now want to work out, okay, what's our maximum, what's our minimum values so that we can find our bin width. And we can do this. We can go minimum equals, maximum equals, and we can pull that out. So we can actually use a formula very quickly to grab this information. We can just go, hey, Excel, give me equals the minimum value in open bracket this whole list of data here close bracket and excel says our minimum value is 127. very similarly i can go hey excel maximum value is open bracket again select my data set and excel returns that i have a maximum value of 227. So, okay, we can now work out our bin width. Keep in mind, we denoted that as I, such that we said I was gonna be some value bigger than or equal to maximum minus minimum divided by our suggestion of bins. So let's write that down. We have equals our maximum value. I can just click it minus our minimum value divided by, or sorry, close bracket, divided by my number of bins. So here I have the cell references. If you're feeling more comfortable, you can do it this way as well. We could go equals 227 minus 127 divided by five. We get the same answer in each case. One is just referencing the numbers in the cell. The other one, we're just putting in the value straight. Okay, so let's compare this. What do we have? Well, Excel decided to default to three bins of size 40. We are suggesting to have five bins of size 20. So how do we fix this? Well, to fix this, we can double click on this here and we can go over to um, horizontal category axes and we can go number of bins. 
So updating our number of bins, we can update our number of bins to five, hit tab. And in this case here it goes, oh, hey, you wanna use five bins? It updated our bin width accordingly, we're good. If this didn't work out for us, well, we want to change this as well, bin width to whatever we decided to change that to. In this case, we now have our appropriate number of bins. We have the appropriate bin width. Our last thing to do is, of course, ensure that we have all of our axes labeled. So on the bottom here, we are going to have height in centimeters and our vertical axes. This is again our frequency. And then our chart title is a histogram of heights in centimeters. And we have our histogram. If you had any troubles with that, if you have any problems with that, feel free to let me know. But this is how we could throw together a histogram in Excel relatively quickly.